so I've just done a quick harvest in the back garden what we call the kitchen garden so I thought I'd just do a quick tour around I've just taken all the nets off so that you can see all the fleece rather so you can see what's going on so around here we've got lots of green garlic and I've just harvested that tub I just basically need some compost to mulch some of the beds but we've got loads more uh, green garlic all the way around here so I've just planted this lattice bed here and then we've got spring cabbages down here and some of these are going to seed now so we're kind of clearing these beds fairly quickly getting them replanted that's going to be a parsnip bed I think some of these plantings kind of do depend on what goes to seed first that's a bed of lettuces again that I planted I don't know three or four days ago something like that and I had some spare beetroot and so I popped it into this bed there's a mix of golden beetroot in there and bolt hardy and I'm not sure whether I'm going to leave this bed to carry on or whether I'll just pull it up and replant it but it's basically got little bits of green garlic in there and as I said this mix of beetroot for me it's a little bit early to plant beetroot out even under fleece and I've got so many on the allotment as I said I might pull it up but generally my approach is if I've got spare seedlings I just bung them in I see how successful they are if they're not successful I just put something else in later so this is overwintered spinach and it's not great really and it's not going to last that long because you know it's going to go to seed in about a month's time so I am going to just pop some spinach in that I've got ready to go uh, it'll be ready to plant next week uh, it's just so much better to put this spinach in because this spinach is going to last for a couple of months before it goes to seed and one last bed of salads again planted just a few days ago I do like this mix planting where I've got the sort of greens and the bronzes and the reds all intermixed together so what else have we got so we've got collets these are the last collets that I've got I'm harvesting these leaves at the moment and obviously the collets themselves and this is such a shady spot I wasn't sure whether I'd actually get a decent harvest off them but I think that I will and I won't need this bed for quite a long time because it is the shadiest bed that I've got um, uh, so I popped some field beans in down the bottom there I just harvested those today new ones will be growing soon loads of kales still providing a fantastic harvest even though they're in the process of going to seed and I think that's partly due to planting them later on so these are quite a late planting I think I put these in something like July time after lettuces and the, you know the later you put them in the longer they last basically so some more curly kales here going to seed like crazy but still fantastic leaf quality on these and then down the edge there I've got I think these are sugar snap peas and then down there we've got um, Oregon sugar pod marge 2 peas they're still growing quite happily under the fleece and then I will be putting supports in for them based off these uh, big posts that I've put in and then down here lots of onions and spring onions and lots of people always asking me what are those tin cans for well they're just to protect the fleece that I've got rolled up down there and to keep the fleece off the uh, in that case onions and peas and then we've got loads more cabbages quite a lot of these again are going to seed we don't care about that 
we love them when they go to seed we use all the leaves and the seed heads they're just great and then more kales and then down here we've got garlic interplanted with spring onions this these spring onions have been outside without any protection and they're just miles behind the spring onions that I've got on the allotment that have had extra protection but that doesn't matter to us again it just means that we get a nice succession I've just got a few early potatoes here it's we have a frost every night at the moment and so they're just going inside the garage at night and then we've got perennial kales doing very nicely and then we're on to the fruit garden and the fruit garden's great at the moment so loads of new growth and flowers soon on the blueberries so the way I've got this garden set up down here is that I've basically got blueberries and gooseberries kind of interplanted all the way along here gooseberries at the back because gooseberries are prickly and then these containers here which we've got nothing in at the moment they will have flowers in and those flowers are currently on the windowsill and they're looking really nice their red geraniums are going in there and then at the back here we've got our strawberries and these are coming on really not quite nicely but they're miles behind the strawberries on the allotment that were growing in coal frames and in the polytunnel and that's great because those are the first earlies and the second earlies and these are the main crop and these are just starting to launch into growth the um, early strawberries in the polytunnel have got strawberries on them now um, and so you know we'll be harvesting those in May which is fantastic so looking forward to those and then across here we've got our summer fruiting raspberries and they're looking great and just starting to come into leaf I moved a second water butt into this corner here but unfortunately it's got a leak it's always had a leak I tried to patch it I failed to do that so I've bought another water butt same as this one just to connect up to that uh, gutter there and that is going to be a big planter on my plot in the allotment this is our afternoon patio that's where I've been sitting all afternoon and down there we've got our morning patio so I over the last month I've done a bit of work on the lawn I've scarified it I've um, raked in some top dressing compost I watered it with this drought treatment because we tend to get almost no rain in spring here and so when I water it I want the water to penetrate deep down into the root zone and so this is pretty good you don't you need very much of it and yeah I put its uh, spring feed on so I gave it wood fish and bone and seaweed meal and it seems to be really enjoying that I did spot weed treat a few patches um, that are really difficult to dig out normally we'll just dig weeds out but you can't really dig that out so I've just cleared my little greenhouse because I'm going to bring all of the onions home and harden them off here before planting them out in the front garden and then in the back garden we've got a few more cherry trees just coming into blossom and another one here try and keep this one kind of under control because it's on the patio it's looking great and I've just started putting my potato containers out and I've just put the bit of compost in the bottom there just to hold them in place so they don't blow away in the wind but basically I'm going to have potatoes here potatoes all the way down here potatoes here 
into the right corner and then we've got blackberries there blackberries down there a grapevine along the wall there these are going to be tumbling tom no not tumbling tom tumbler uh, tomatoes down there potatoes here potatoes there potatoes down there potatoes here and potatoes there more potatoes in the corner there so just give them the drive a bit of a clear up and what we have down here is all of these containers with trees in them so these are cherries apples more apples more cherries 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 pears and cherries and then we're going to have more potatoes down here have this canopy up or out on the patio all the way through summer and into autumn and we start it blowing away in the wind because we've got it on these guy lines and we put a bungee cord on that keeps it really taut no matter how the wind's kind of blowing and we've got three of those lines so one goes to that wall over there one goes up to that fence there and one goes onto the little shed there and obviously we have to take it the canopy down when the wind's really high so we generally do that every night but it works really well we've never had it blow over even in quite strong winds and for the next month everything lives underneath this fleece which is not unfortunately totally cat proof well there we are trying to train them and all the details of the fleece and the clips and everything that I use you can find in the planting section of my ebook which you'll find linked below and so that's everything that's going on in the kitchen garden and I'm saving what's going on in the front garden because they're doing a major project there and so it's worth a, a video all on its own but basically we're creating an ornamental flower and vegetable garden where our lawn used to be and it's looking great i'm really excited to show you what we're doing there anyway my name's steve this is a seaside kitchen garden and allotment channel and i'll see you soon